A ship-to-ship -ship or STS operation is where two ships are safely brought alongside in order for liquid cargo to be safely transferred between them at sea, whilst at anchor or underway. At Top Fenders, upon receipt of a nomination and before every operation, we complete a thorough compatibility check on both vessels involved in the STS. This is in line with the Ship-to-Ship -ship Transfer Guide produced by OCIMF, a book which provides guidance for completing a safe STS operation. An understanding of this guide is recommended for all personnel involved in an STS operation. This guide also outlines five checklists which are to be completed at various stages of the STS operation. 1. Pre-fixture information. 2. Before operations commence. 3. Before run-in and mooring. 4. Before cargo transfer. 5. Before unmooring. Before any vessel can move on to the next stage, the previous checklist has to be fully completed and signed. Our mooring master will not have approval to proceed for the STS operation until our pre-arrival information has been received from both vessels and the vessel compatibility check has been completed. To avoid collision on the approach and to protect the vessels whilst alongside at sea, large rubber pneumatic fenders are deployed along the side of one of the vessels prior to the operation. At top fenders, we provide two sizes of fenders. Primary fenders, which are positioned between the forward and aft points of the parallel body line of the vessel at numerous points dependent on the number of fenders required however, avoiding obstructing the manifold. Secondary fenders are smaller than the primaries and whilst they are also placed at the forward and aft points of the parallel body length, they sit above the water line at the height of the lowest freeboard. These are designed to limit any contact made by the vessels in the approach and casting off stages. The vessel which receives the STS equipment and top fenders mooring master is referred to as the manoeuvring vessel. In deciding which vessel is to be fended, we compare key characteristics between the two vessels. Firstly, we compare the overall length, LOA, of the vessels, and in accordance with our policies, we fender the shortest vessel. However, if the LOAs of the respective vessel are within 10% difference, they are referred to as similar sized. And on this occasion, we fender the vessel with the lowest displacement. The issue with fendering and manoeuvring the heavier vessel is due to the fact her movement will be more restricted through the water, resulting in less manoeuvrability during the critical initial approach stage. Once the mooring master has boarded the manoeuvring vessel, conducted his safety rounds, and prior to the operation proceeding, the mooring master will carry out a joint plan of operations meeting, or JPO, between himself and both vessel masters. In this meeting, he will discuss the STS operation in more detail including the mooring and berthing plan, the characteristics of both vessels, approach speeds and headings, any risks and safety concerns, security aspects of the port and any port-specific and environmental information for the local area. It is not uncommon for a vessel's captain to be unfamiliar with the geographical location and so the mooring master's guidance is critical and must be recorded in the JPO. In some ports, before an STS operation can take place offshore, the local port or naval authority is to be informed. This clearance is obtained by the vessel's local agent. Once the clearance is in place, both vessels will be approached to heave anchor and from their respective positions will proceed to begin the approach. Sometimes the unfended vessel will remain at anchor and the manoeuvring vessel will approach her. But if the mooring is completed underway, the unfended vessel will be asked to maintain a steady course and speed whilst the manoeuvring fendered vessel will slowly make her approach. Once she is safely close enough to the unfendered vessel, they will start to pass over their mooring lines to connect the two vessels together. Three types of moorings are used in a mooring operation. Spring lines, which stop forward and aft, or longitudinal movement. Breast lines, which stop lateral movement. And head and stern lines, which stop a combination of these two movements from occurring. If the vessels are the same size, allowances will be made by offsetting the vessels to ensure that any overhanging parts on each vessel, like bridge wings, will not make contact whilst the vessels are rolling. It is important to remember that whilst alongside, even though they are connected via the moorings, the two vessels will not react in the same way to the effects of wind and swell. 
Each vessel will roll according to their vessel's stability arrangements, size and design, so the moorings will be continually monitored throughout the operation. The weather is monitored at all times by the shore team and the vessel's crew, but if the effect of the weather becomes too great, there will always be the risk of parting lines, causing possible contact and also the stretch and disconnection of the cargo hoses. At this point, the vessels will suspend the operation and or cast off until the weather is back within safe operating limits. This is always only upon joint agreement from both masters and the MM. Top Fenders follows the following weather criteria. Each day we receive a weather forecast which outlines the predicted weather at the nominated STS location. Here we can plan for any unfavourable weather accordingly, notifying clients of the possible delay. Since this is only a forecast, whilst updating our clients, we can provide present local weather conditions from our mooring masters and or offshore support craft. Once safely alongside, the vessels can commence preparations for the cargo operation. This includes tank inspections, connecting the hoses and completing any checklists and safety meetings required by any party. All of these stages require the presence of the ship's crew, surveyors and inspectors and will require continuing assessment throughout. At Top Fenders, we also provide cargo hoses for the STS operation. The type of hose depends on the cargo type, as we have specialised hoses for cargo such as jet oil. These hoses are provided in strings. The number of hoses which make up a string depends on the difference between each vessel's height of manifold above the waterline and its range throughout the operation. We will always provide the safe minimum number of hoses to safely make up one string. Nevertheless, due to the possible risk of damage to the hoses and environmental damage. This number is confirmed in the compatibility check. The hoses are connected at each manifold correctly and always in the presence of the top fender mooring master, who will ensure best practices are always followed. More strings can be attached to increase the rate of discharge between the vessels. However, this will depend on both vessels' discharge and loading capabilities. This loading rate will be discussed in the pre-cargo meetings. Once all is in order and commercial instructions have been passed, the vessels can commence the cargo transfer. Once the flow of cargo is stabilised, an ETC, estimated time of completion, can be declared. Whilst alongside, the vessel's crew and our mooring master will make periodic safety and security checks of the mooring equipment and other aspects of the operation. It is advised that during the cargo operation, no vessels come alongside either vessel as this could affect the moorings and cargo hose positioning. This will be monitored by either vessel, with safety messages being transmitted to local traffic via the GMDSS system. When the nominated cargo volume has been transferred, volume calculations and alloging of the tanks are carried out, and only once cargo figures have been agreed between all parties are the hoses correctly drained and disconnected, with the documentation eventually signed, agreed and completed. The positions of the secondary fenders will need to be corrected due to the changes in draft and freeboard, which the vessels will agree in the unmooring plan. The mooring lines are then carefully casted off in accordance with the unmooring plan, and the fendered vessel will manoeuvre away to drop anchor. The top fender's support craft will then come alongside and recover our assets, completing the STS operation. However, if the vessel is proceeding from another STS operation where we are coordinating the operation, we will keep the equipment on board until all the operations have been completed. At Top Fenders, a clear line of communication and updates with our clients is important at all times. We are in constant communication with our mooring masters, reducing this contact during critical stages to ensure they are concentrating on the task at hand and our operations team are available 24 hours a day from our bases in both London and Lomé through a variety of communication methods, WhatsApp, text, phone, Skype, instant messaging. If any issues or incidents arise at any point during an operation, we will inform all relevant stakeholders immediately, enacting our own company's emergency procedure plans, as well as producing a detailed written report. By choosing top fenders to carry out your STS operation, you can ensure that through our carefully created process flows and procedures, that you will be provided with a safe, effective and efficient STS operation every time.